Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today we're gonna make a spicy orange beef and broccoli that's gonna taste even better than your favorite Asian takeout. And we're gonna do it in the Ninja Foodi, and it's all gonna be ready at the same time. So let's get started. The first thing we wanna do is have a pound and a half of beef. Now this at the, at the grocery store or butcher might be labeled London broil. One thing that you need to know is that London broil is not a cut of beef. It is actually a way of preparing beef. So traditionally it is marinated and then broiled. Um, however, this will work fine for our purposes. So if you see something labeled London broil, it's probably a top round or a flank steak. Go ahead and get it, it's fine. They tend to go on sale a lot and they're a little cheaper. And that's what I have here. I've also used sirloin, which is fine, works great, and something that's a flank steak, an actual flank steak labeled as such. Um, but just get a pound and a half. You want it to be a lean cut of meat and we want to have, I see a little marbling here, which is gonna be nice. And even though um, the flank steak tends to be a little on the tougher side, we're gonna cut this so incredibly thin and, cu and cut it against the grain. That's really important. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're gonna use the Ninja Foodi to kind of air crisp it up. So we're gonna do a quick cooking method and this is gonna work perfectly in our spicy orange beef and broccoli. So one tip to getting really thin slices is to put your meat in the freezer for about an hour or two, just to get it sort of frozen through. Now I can push on this so the outside is not completely frozen, but the inside is gonna be a little more frozen and you'll, you're gonna get easier slices with your knife. You also wanna make sure that you have a really sharp knife. You wanna go against the grain. So what I'm looking for is looking to see where the grain is going. And it looks like it's going this way. And I kinda of take the meat across, yep, it's going this way. That's fine. And I could trim up this, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's not enough fat to, to even worry about, so I'm just gonna leave it on. Um, so we're gonna be cutting this against the grain this way. Now, make sure, careful, put your claw down there, hold on to the meat, have a sharp knife, and just start making little slices and you want them about that thin. I mean, they are thin, maybe an eighth of an inch. Now, if you get thicker slices, don't worry about it. It's gonna be fine, um, but this is gonna ensure that your beef is really tender. And we're just gonna keep going down. And sometimes, you know, you don't get it exact, and I don't get it exact all the time, and that is fine. So, see, you can almost see through it. That's gonna be perfect in this dish. But there, see, now, I got a little one, no problem. That happens sometimes. All right, so I'm gonna finish uh, slicing all this up and then we'll get to marinating the meat. And we're just gonna do a real quick marinade on the meat. But you could actually do this the night before um, and that would be fine as well. Okay, so now I'm getting to the end here and what I can feel is like this is wobbling around and that is dangerous when you've got a sharp knife and anything wobbling on your cutting board. So we wanna go with the same principle of putting the flat surface down. So I'm just gonna turn this over. I'm gonna square this up because that sometimes happens where you get like a little end. And then I'm just gonna take this, take my knife and just slice right through that as well. And now that we've got this a lot flatter, I can just resume. We're still going against the grain, that hasn't changed, but I just wanted to put the flatter side down for better stability and keep those fingers tucked. And again, when you get down to that, you can flip it over again. We're still going against the grain. That last one, move your fingers out of the way. All right, perfect. Now we've got our pound of beef. And again, you could use a pound or a pound and a half. This is a pound. So we've got that all cut up. And now what we're gonna do is get it into a baggie and make up our marinade for this. This only needs to marinate for like 15 minutes or so. But you could do it the day before and, and have it marinate overnight and that would be great. So let's get all this into the bag here. For the marinade, we are gonna use two tablespoons of sesame oil and one teaspoon of salt. We have a zest, the zest of one orange and one tablespoon of 
red chili pepper paste. Now I make my own red chili pepper paste and I will include that in the instructions for this recipe, but you can also get it from Gourmet Garden. It's usually in your grocery store in the refrigerated section in the produce aisle. So you can usually find it there. But if not, and you wanna make it yourself, um, I will definitely have the recipe available for you. And that is it for our marinade. So it's real simple. And I'm just gonna stir this together. And we're gonna dump it in the bag. I wanna make sure to get all of it out, so I'm gonna use my little nifty tool here. Now what I recommend is definitely leaving this meat out um, if you're gonna make it right away. Now if you're gonna make it tomorrow or something, then you definitely wanna put it in the refrigerator. But if you're gonna make it like I am in just a few minutes, leave it out on the counter, because remember it's frozen. We want it to, um, to finish thawing, which it will very quickly. And we also wanna try to get it to room temperature. So just mix it all up and then set it to the side. All right, that is perfect. So while our meat is coming to room temperature and marinating in that delicious marinade, we're gonna make up our sauce. Now we won't use this till the end, but we have a few minutes, so it's a good time to make it up. The first thing I have here is two teaspoons of fish sauce. And I know people might be going, what? It actually adds a lot of depth to these Asian dishes, and I really encourage you to use it and don't skip it. Um, but if you really have an aversion, you can skip it. Um, but I really, just give it a try. And I will link to the kind I use below. You can usually find fish sauce in any grocery store in the Asian section. And then I also have two tablespoons of soy sauce. Now I've used both dark and light soy sauce for this dish. I prefer the dark soy sauce. However, I could not find it at the grocery store when I went this last time. So I'm using regular soy sauce and it'll be, it'll be just fine. So put that in. We have a half of a cup of honey. We're just gonna put that in. I love this little measuring thing for like peanut butter and honey and um, other thicker items. It, you just can't beat it, it's awesome. We have a teaspoon of salt. Now if you're watching your salt, you can certainly cut back on that. I mean, you've got the soy sauce in there, but I did find that this was the right balance of salt to sweet to spicy. And then in this bowl, I have two teaspoons of grated ginger, one tablespoon of red pepper paste that I make myself, like I said before, but you can use the Gourmet Garden. And I also have the zest of one orange. We are gonna zest up a second orange, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently. Um, so I wanted to show you that on camera. For this zest, I simply used a micro plane grater and I just lightly went over the surface of the orange. You wanna be careful that you don't go past the orange part in to the white part, which is called the pith, because the pith is very bitter and you don't want that ending up in your dish. So we're just gonna add that in here. And then I also have, now this is about three quarters of a cup of freshly squeezed orange juice, because we used, we're gonna be using three, three whole oranges for this dish. Um, but I'm gonna squeeze the last one in here because I needed to get the zest. Um, off of it and I wanted to show you guys how to do that. So I'm just gonna kinda, I hope I have a big enough bowl. I might have to switch this into a bigger bowl actually, but let's see if we can make it, make it all work. All right, so what I have here is one orange, just medium size orange. And then I have a different type of zester because what this is gonna do is make thicker strips. The other one makes really fine, I'll just show you, really fine sprinkles. And that is great for the marinade and, and good for part of this, but we also wanna have some of those strips of orange because this is spicy orange beef and broccoli. We wanna be able to see that orange in there. So this is also a zester and you can use two different sides to it. I'm gonna see how this orange is and how deep this will go in. The thicker the skin, uh, if the skin, if the skin of the orange is pretty thick, then I usually use this part on the back and I'll show you what that will do. It just kind of digs in and makes a nice 
strip. That looks pretty good. That didn't get too much of the pith, so that looks pretty good. And then the other side will go down your orange and it will do thinner strips. And you know what, I think I'm gonna go with the thinner strips. So you see the white on the back of here? I'm concerned that that may make our dish a little bitter. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with the thinner strips which do not have any of the white. Um, you'll, see, you'll see both. Now I could candy this and take away the bitterness, but who's got time for that? Let's just go with the little strips. Also, if you don't have something like this, um, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just use plain zest, it'll be fine. All right, so I'm just gonna go around this orange. I don't want to go all the way around. I want them to be about this size, so about two inches long. That'll look nice and pretty in our beef and broccoli. The other thing is you don't want to go back over these uh, pieces because if you go back over them, you're going to get that pith. It smells so good because as you're doing this, the little orange juice sprays out. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. That looks pretty good. That looks great. All right, so I'm just going to pile this up here and go ahead and put it into our sauce. Now, I hope this bowl is gonna hold the rest of this orange juice. So now I'm gonna cut the orange and I'm gonna juice it. These are beautiful oranges. I mean, they're just gorgeous and they smell wonderful and they have a lot of juice to them. I was really pleased with that. Okay, so I'm gonna cut them into quarters and I'm gonna use my handy dandy juicer that I absolutely love. This is great for lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruits. You just have to quarter them to get the juice out. It works great. And I'll use another bowl so I don't overflow that one. And we'll just squeeze. Let's get the other one cut in half and we'll finish up our orange juice and it just smells delicious. I used some oranges the other day um, with the breakfast burrito video to uh, serve with the breakfast burrito. Oh my gosh, it was so good. And those breakfast burritos are incredible. If you have not tried them, I will link to the recipe right up there. Give them a try. They're super easy. It's all done in the Ninja Foodie and they are restaurant quality. I kid you not, they are delicious. So give them a try. All right, perfect. So now let me just get this cleaned up. By that time, the beef will be ready for us to air crisp in the Ninja Foodie. So while I was cleaning up, I started to preheat the foodie. It is on the air crisp mode at 400 degrees and it's been going for about 11 minutes now. You definitely wanna preheat the foodie with the basket inside because we're going to air fry the beef in the basket and we want that hot as well so that the beef starts to cook right away. Now for the secret, which is optional but suggested, this is two tablespoons of cornstarch. Now what this is gonna do is put a very light coating on the beef, it's gonna combine with the oil in the marinade and it's gonna give us that crispy uh, edges to the beef like you get in an Asian restaurant. So what we're gonna do is pour this in here. And now it's really important that you get this kind of evenly distributed. So I'm just gonna sort of massage it around in with the beef mixture and the marinade. I did try this a couple of different ways. I tried to dredge each piece of beef into the, um, the cornstarch thinking that that would be better and it wasn't. It actually turned out really gummy and it wasn't good at all. So definitely make sure that you massage all of the cornstarch into the beef and the marinade.
All right, that looks pretty good there. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is open up the Ninja Foodie. Oh, that heat coming out, it's hot. And we're gonna dump our beef right in there. And that sizzle, that's what I want to hear. And take some tongs and sort of move it around. Now, they're not gonna be in a single layer because we've got a good amount of beef. Um, but I try to get them spread out the best I can. All right, that looks good. Now let's get that lid closed real quick. And we're gonna air crisp this for probably 15 to 20 minutes. Now you just have to use your judgment. What we wanna see is that all of the outside of the beef is cooked. Um, now we are gonna put it back in a sauce and reheat it again, but just briefly. So if you like your steak really well done, you might need to go even longer than the 15 minutes. So during this time that it's cooking, um, whether you go 15 minutes or 20 minutes, you do want to turn the steak over several times. So about every three to five minutes, I'm gonna go in here and just sort of flip it around. That's gonna allow for even browning on all the sides um, and to get those little crispy edges. Okay, so this has been um, air crisping for about four minutes. Oh, and I'm starting to see some of those crispy edges that oh, makes me so excited. So let's give it a flip. Just sort of move it all around in there. That's awesome. I love the Ninja Foodie. Now we're gonna go another uh, five minutes. So I'm gonna add some time here. I'm taking it all the way up to 15, even though I know we've already done four minutes. Um, I just need, you know, just to have that time on there and I'll check it again in five. All right, so it's just about been 15 minutes. I've flipped them a couple times and the beef is looking perfect. So it's time to get it out of the Ninja Foodie. We've got the crisp edges and that looks fantastic. Okay, great. So let me get my handy dandy little grabbers here and grab this basket out. And then we are just gonna set this that out of the way. What I have here is a two layer steam basket. Um, there's a lid to it and there's two levels for steaming. Unfortunately, the lid does not fit when it goes into the Ninja Foodi with the pressure lid on, it just doesn't fit, but that's okay. I figured out many workarounds here. The first thing we're gonna do is we wanna get our rice cooked and we're gonna partially cook our rice. Um, we're not gonna start the broccoli at the same time because it's good, it would turn to mush and we don't want that in our spicy orange beef and broccoli. So I have a six inch Fat Daddy-O pan here. And what I recommend, what I found actually works pretty well when you're making rice, whether for this Asian dish or something else and you're gonna do the pot and pot method, is to take a little bit of butter and just brush it on the bottom of the pan that you're using. This really has um, helped prevent the rice from sticking to the bottom, so I do recommend that. And that's enough, just a little, just a little painting of it. And this brush is incredible, I'll link to that below. It's a Pampered Chef, um, silicone chef's brush. I use it all the time. It is fantastic, really fantastic. Now, I have one cup of jasmine rice that I have already rinsed. So I'm gonna pour that in. And I'm gonna put in three quarters of a cup of water. And I know, I know, it's usually one to one or even with jasmine rice, I've found that one to one and a quarter um, rice to water ratio works really well. But because we're gonna be doing this in two steps, I'm gonna start with the three quarters of a cup so once you have the one cup of rice and the three quarters cup of water into your Fat Daddy-O pan, I'm gonna put it into the one layer of the steamer basket. Now with one layer, the lid fits, and so we're gonna use it for this step here. So I'm just gonna cover it up, 
And then I have uh, these, I think they're called graffiti bands, and I just wrap it around. This gives me like a little handle to use when I'm getting the pot out, so I just kind of wrap it around here and adjust it so that I have something to grab onto. I'm gonna put one cup of water into the bottom. Now don't worry about these bits. They're not gonna matter at all for the pressure cooking. Um, the only thing I'm gonna do is just sort of scrape around just to make sure it doesn't get that, that burn notice, but we'll be fine. Because none of that's gonna get into the food, so that'll be fine. Then we'll clean the pot afterwards anyway. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so we're gonna set this down and get our pressure lid on. Line up those arrows and just turn. Make sure that the black valve in the back is set to seal. And this time, which is kind of different because we usually cook under high pressure, this time we're gonna cook low pressure. And the time is gonna be for three minutes. And we're gonna do an immediate release. And just hit start, and then we let the Ninja Foodi come up to pressure, which I would say is not gonna take much more than five minutes because we only have a little bit in there, a little, little bit of water. Um, and then we'll let it cook for three minutes on low pressure. That's very important or your rice will get overdone when we go to the next step where we do this, the steaming of the broccoli. So three minutes and then we'll do an immediate release and then we'll get the broccoli cooked up and then the whole dish comes together. We get to plate it and we get to eat it and you're gonna feel like you're in an Asian restaurant or at least I am until you make it at home. Okay, so the rice is under pressure, on low pressure, for three minutes, and now I'm just gonna immediately release it. Okay, the red button popped down. Now I'm gonna take the lid off, and you wanna put, take it off away from you so that the steam moves away and not towards your face. And I'll just put this over here for a minute. We will be using the pressure lid again. All right, now I'm gonna use my little mitts. The, the silicone doesn't get too hot, um, but just in case, I'm gonna use my mitts. And just lift this up out of here. I love this steamer basket. I made the best um, steamed buns that uh, is you know, a homemade recipe, and oh my gosh, they were so good. So I'm definitely gonna be doing a video on that soon. All right, so. Just take a peek here. That looks good. Looks really good. But we are, it's a little wet in there, but don't worry about it because we are going to fix that in the next uh, little thing that we do. So I'm gonna move this to the side. Now what I have, I'm gonna use the bottom layer here, nothing in it, just the little holes are there. And I have three cups of broccoli florets that I cut, you know, kind of large pieces, but about the same size. All of them are about the same size. Now the lid won't fit on, but that is fine. And we're gonna take this and put it together here. Now, these bands come in different sizes, so I have a bigger one because I need to go over two layers now, so I'm gonna use that. And I'll link to these below because they are really handy um, for going in the pressure cooker. Now I'm gonna be very careful when I do this because I don't want to touch that metal, the metal uh, cake pan that the rice is in because it is really hot. Just move this around a little bit so it gets a good secure thing on there. Okay, we can use the same water, that is fine. Leave it uncovered. I'm gonna put it back in. Put the pressure lid back on and now we're gonna steam it for five minutes. It's gonna get that broccoli done. So we want it to the vent, okay? Not seal, vent. Because we're gonna go ahead and do the steam function and we're gonna take it to five minutes and hit start. This will heat up in no time. Um, sometimes I've noticed that the red button will pop up just for a brief moment. Um, I guess while it's really building the heat in the pot to start the steam, uh, but it will depress again. Um, and that happens sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So if it pops up, don't worry. As long as you're on vent and you, hit, and you set it to steam, you're gonna be fine. 
So there's a little less than a minute to go and um, the red button did pop up for a while and then it popped back down and went under steam and, and it was fine. Um, but just so you know that that can happen so you don't freak out and think that you set it to pressure. Um, that's happened to me several times when I'm steaming. You can see the steam coming out. When it's, and I, I'm gonna say building pressure even though it's not technically building pressure, it's, it's creating a lot of steam. So it's heating up the water in the bottom, which then is creating the steam. And I think that steam is then causing the little button to pop up and it releases a ton of steam um, until I guess it equalizes in the pot and then the button um, goes down, it depresses, and then we get the countdown. So that's how the steam function seems to work. And I like using it. I use it, I use the steam function all the time for heating up leftovers. It's fantastic. Okay, so now we don't have to release any pressure because we didn't build any. And you can just uh, take this off. Just move the lid over here and then we're gonna go ahead and get this out. All right, perfect. Now, one thing it, that I noticed is that I'm totally out of water in here, so next time I would put in two cups. I only put one cup in. Didn't happen the last time when I made the recipe, but just to be safety's sake, I'm gonna write the recipe for two cups of water in the bottom. The extra water won't matter. Having too little water could make a, a difference. Okay, so what I wanna do is get these separated. Oh, that broccoli's beautiful! Oh, it's perfect. See the vibrant green color? That's what we want to see. That means that it has not been overcooked. Um, and now I'm just, just to keep this warm, I'm going to go ahead and put it, put this lid on, but not all the way. Because now we just have to make, put our sauce in the pan and finish our dish and plate it. I'm going to grab a piece of aluminum foil here uh, and So real quick, before I cover this, because we want to keep the heat in while we make the sauce and, and warm up that beef. So I'm just going to move this around and I can tell that it's like perfect. Nothing sticking to the bottom. That's that butter that we used. And it's real fluffy. Oh, this looks fantastic. So now we're just going to cover it with a little bit of foil. That's just to keep it warm. We'll set it aside. Now I do have to wash the pan out because now we're gonna make our sauce. So I need to really quick go and do that and then we'll make the sauce, put the beef in and plate up our food. Okay, so I quickly um, washed out the inner pot and we're gonna go to the sear saute function on high and turn it on. And now we're gonna get our sauce in. So I'm gonna put that little bit of uh, orange juice that we squeezed. There's still some more in here, so it's a full cup of orange juice. and. This is the sauce we made earlier in the video, and I'm going to pour that in. Make sure to get all that honey out. All right. Now this is sort of the same um, principle as I did with the Asian sticky wings, and if you haven't tried those, I will link to that right up there because, oh my gosh, that recipe is one of my absolute favorites. Um, the best Asian sticky wings I've ever had. The best wings I've ever had, honestly. All done right in the foodie. So the principle is the same as that sauce. What we wanna do is heat it on high until we reduce it, it'll become a lot thicker. And then we'll add in our beef and our broccoli. We'll give it a little stir, we'll plate, and we'll eat. Okay, so we see the sauce starting to boil. This is when you definitely want to be stirring it um, pretty frequently, if not continuously, because we don't want anything to burn and it's gonna start to reduce pretty quick once that boiling starts. I just sort of stand here and watch it and smell it because it smells amazing. <laughs> We're not going to reduce this as much as we do for the sticky wings um, because I want some sauce for the rice, um, but we are going to reduce it just a little bit more. What I'm looking for is when I scrape along the bottom, I want to see that the sauce stays away from the pan for just about at least 30 seconds, and we're getting close there. 
Not quite though. Okay, I think we are almost there. See how when I pull my little scoop and spread, which this thing is called, across the bottom, you can see the bottom of the pot for just a few seconds. That is about the thickness that we want the sauce to be. So now we get to put in that beef to rewarm it up. And then I recommend getting the pan or the, the fry basket right into the sink because you want to start to soak it so that um, it's easier to clean because there are some little pieces that are stuck on there. Move this around a little bit, get our beef coated, and we're gonna dump in that broccoli, which is still warm, um, but I like to get it coated in the sauce too. Look at that. I'm telling you. I don't think there's anything that this Ninja Foodie can't make. And everything comes out tasting like you got it at a restaurant. It's so wonderful. All right, so I'm just gonna give that a second just to warm up that beef. And then we'll plate up our rice and our spicy orange beef and broccoli, and I'll give it a taste. A scoop, about a half of a cup of rice. This will make four servings. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, let's get in here and get some of that beef and broccoli. All right, isn't that beautiful? But we definitely wanna put a little garnish on it. We wanna be a little, little fancy. Now for this, I'm only going to use the end, the green part. And I'm just gonna go on the bias. So I'm just doing this real quick here. I would definitely do it a little bit uh, better, but anyway, there we go. Look at that. That is so pretty. Now I have toasted sesame seeds. So um, if you're gonna put this on at the end as a little garnish, definitely use the ones that are already toasted. If not, you need to toast them because the plain sesame seeds won't taste very good in here unless they're toasted. All right, let me get my chopsticks. Let's do this, let's do this the real way, huh? Let's see. All right, let's get a piece of that. I mean, the, the edges I can tell are just crispy. I mean, this looks like I got it at an Asian restaurant. Mm. Oh my goodness. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. That is so wonderful. All right, let's taste the rice. Rice is kind of tricky to make, you know. It's either too sticky, too watery, too mushy. This came out perfect. All right, see the broccoli. Did I overcook it? No, but almost. I might bump that five minute steam time down to maybe three or four. I like my broccoli a little on the crisp side. And all those, this is really good, it has a great texture. I think for me, I would probably um, take that time down just a little bit. The spice is amazing in here. If you don't like spicy food, definitely cut that red chili pepper paste either completely out or in half because it, it this is a spicy dish for sure. But oh my gosh, it is so delicious. I'm so in love with the way that these, the, the ends of the beef are like the crispy. Oh, it's just so wonderful. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. You can make this at home. It takes less than 30 minutes. And you get to use the pressure cook, the steam, the saute, and the air crisp. But you get to use so many of the features that make the Ninja Foodie so spectacular. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And to all you guys that have subscribed to my channel, I cannot thank you enough. 
Uh, your support means the world to me. If you haven't subscribed yet and you want to, you can do that right over there. Thank you so much for watching. Can I do this? Oh, look. See, apparently this is the way you're supposed to eat rice as it falls off my chopsticks. I'm not going to be able to do it. I did it. Yay. All right. Definitely give this a try. Use a fork if you want.